to my channel Let's Go Vietnamese Chào mừng tất cả các bạn đã quay trở lại với kênh học tiếng Việt của Tâm what, Do you see what I'm wearing now? This is the Christmas hat of Santa Claus hat the Giáng sinh vui vẻ Merry Christmas everyone I'm so excited to share with you this topic today In today's lesson, we are gonna study something very essential in Vietnamese and very special in Vietnamese and also very difficult for some VSL, VSL learners <laughs> What is this? What is this? Okay, let's get started What are classifiers? Why do we need classifiers? That is Pocky asks a question, but these are two questions So do you know this character? Pocky, he asks some dumb questions, right? But the way um, the other character answered to him so much fun sounds so fun so uh, let's make this video kind of fun like this because i had prepared a lot i had spent a lot of time to prepare for this lesson and i put a lot of thoughts a lot of um, ideas a lot of uh, preparation a lot of effort into this video because i know a lot of you struggling or Thing, are thinking that classifier are so difficult so let's get started now okay so i'm gonna compare with you something about english and vietnamese of course you may be not an, an english native speaker but because i'm speaking in english so i suppose that you are all know english that's why i have to i will explain or compare everything from vietnamese and uh, like between Vietnamese and English, that would be easier. We have a common language, that is English, okay? So, English and Vietnamese. Let's take an example, a book. Quyển sách, quyển sách. So, in English, you need here, that is called, what is it? Um, uh, the, the, what is article? So you have the, or the, or, or a, a, or n for, um, the nouns that start with a vowel so you have article in english in vietnamese you have classifiers but we don't always use classifiers so let's see the example here i read a book or i read books so you can read one book or you can read some books we don't know oh no no you have to say uh, specifically, do you read a book or you are talking about reading the books, like a lot of books, okay? But in Vietnamese, we just say Tôi đọc sách Tôi đọc sách So, in this sentence, you don't mention that You don't mention that how many books do I read or yeah, you don't mention, you just say read book, đọc sách So in this case we don't need classifier for shop. So quyển is classifier for things like looks like book, books, okay? Đọc sách, we don't have to say how many books you read or like very specific in English. You have to say is this a book, like first time you introduce something or the book, the second time or everyone knows what it is. So that is English. What now? How about plural nouns? One book, two books. So you can put book and choose number and you change the, the noun from single to plural form. But Vietnamese, you can say one shop like một shop. Hai shop, you have to use classifier here. So when you count when in number or that is like the main subject, the main topic of what you are talking to, you need classifier, right? But this is just the first sentence, it's I, I, and the subject, tôi is the subject here. So that's not talking about the book. If I say this is a book, I might use classifier quyển. But this example here, một quyển sách, hai quyển sách, okay? So when you have number, and the noun, you need classifier, definitely, absolutely need classifier in this situation. But some cases you say this is a book, that is a pen. So you have A and A here. 
Và Vietnamese you can just say Đây là sắt, đó là bút So this is book, that is pen Very simple, like Vietnamese You don't count Oh, this is book, that is pen This is book, that is pen, that is not book That Vietnamese But when you say with numbers Like I have five books So in Vietnamese you say Tôi có năm quyển sách So classifier comes in right now Tôi có năm quyển sách You can't say Tôi có năm sách That would sound not natural in Vietnamese So the thing is you need to study classifier It's important of course Because that a feature of Vietnamese like English You have single noun, plural nouns You have article, you have a lot of tenses But Vietnamese we have classifiers and we have tones That's it Not so many right? Okay Another example with student uh, Student Học sinh Học sinh Okay I'm a student. In Vietnamese, you don't need the a uh, here. Just say, I am student. Tôi là học sinh. You don't have to say how many students because actually tôi already has the meaning of how many, right? Tôi là học sinh. So we don't need article. But when you put numbers, there are three students in the class. Có, có, there are, there is ba học sinh trong lớp. Có ba học sinh trong lớp Okay, so here Because học sinh is not a normal noun It's a position of, um, of uh, the person It's not just one person, two people But it's a position So you can say with number Only Because that is not just normal noun It's a position uh, Trong lớp So in class In the class in English, you have to use article the here, but in Vietnamese, you don't have to. It's not necessary. And also in English, you have things like um, subject and uh, verb agreement. But Vietnamese, you don't have that such a thing. So no plural noun, no conjugations, a lot of things that Vietnamese is much more simple than English or some other languages, I guess. But the classifier, so again, what are classifier? Like you see, uh, classifier, actually, it is the categorized of things that have something in similar, like book, comic book, magazine, and, and, and calendar book, something, or notebook. So those, in English, you have the word book in the name, like modifier or different book. So in Vietnamese, we put them in the same group, same and categorize, and that is like a lot of paper or many pages of paper are bound together. So that is book. That's one classifier. So when you don't say what kind of book, but you just say quyển, something, and then we have the idea right away. That is how short Vietnamese is. Like you can say the sentence very short and not so clear in English, but in Vietnamese, it's clear enough. People get the idea because of the classifier. Why do we need classifiers? Uh, like I just say, when we group things in categorize, and then you use a classifier to name that category, everybody knows what you're talking about without saying a lot. You just say some syllables, some words, and then people understand. But also, that is a feature, a, a specialty of Vietnamese, you know. Every language has something special, right? So this is something special about Vietnamese. At first, when I hadn't teach Vietnamese yet, I didn't think about classifiers. And I didn't even know how to name the thing. Like you cannot just say one, một sắc, hai sắc. You have to say một quyển sắc, hai quyển sắc. Okay, so... And gradually, now I know that they are called classifiers and you need classifier, especially, specifically when you use with numbers in front of the nouns. Hmm. Okay, how cool. Okay, so let's start with the first classifier. Classifier for people. Người, người. Very easy. I'm a, I'm a person, người. Uh, so you can use người to count how many people, like một người, hai người, 
ba người etc right một người hai người ba người or a group of people một nhóm người so a group một nhóm người or everyone mọi người one here is implied that the people so mọi người is it so when you see người 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 that is people or you can also use người in like a man or a woman người đàn ông người phụ nữ người đàn ông người phụ nữ we have người in common every noun here has người so you know all oh, that's about human people person etc and you can also use người with the country name to talk about the people of that country how easy right like um we use tiếng to talk about the language that that people speak like tiếng Việt is the language that Vietnamese people speak tiếng Am that the language that the English people speak or like a lot of country also speak tiếng Am but like um, Korea and Korean we have Hàn Quốc is the country and we have tiếng Hàn Quốc is the language that they speak so easy and just one simple rule and that's apply for everything but english you have to change like china to chinese japan to japanese korea to korean england to english a lot of things you have to change a little bit but that is still add up to the thing that we have to study so the người classifier in front of a country name easy to talk about the people like người mỹ người Việt Nam, us, người Anh, người Pháp, người Đức, người Hàn Quốc, người Tây Ban Nha, Spain, Tây Ban Nha, người Trung Quốc, người Nhật, người Ý, etc. Ha, huh, ok, người, easy, people. So, besides người, we have other things. Another thing is what classifier to say. Other thing that is cái, cái classifier for things or object. For example, cái ly, cái chén, a rice bowl, cái bàn, cái ghế, cái giường, cái tủ. Okay, very easy. Anything you can use cái, but this cái, 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 not me, <laughs> not me. Yeah. Okay, so cái. Everything around us, you can use with cái because it's a thing, it's a non-living thing. And the second classifier for objects is chiếc, chiếc. Also, so cái and chiếc are very, very similar. You can use both to mention things. But chiếc is used more for single items. Like if you have a pair of shoes and you want to talk about one shoe only, you use chiếc giày or chiếc dép or something that is like easily, like loosely connect or combine to the background or the base like this. A boat, a ship or a car. Chiếc thuyền chiếc xe because chiếc thuyền is not stick to the water the river or the sea and chiếc xe it move it moves it portable is automobile thing it can move easily so you can use chiếc for thing like that this one can be chiếc this one can be chiếc this one can be chiếc chiếc nón chiếc áo etc and chiếc lá but uh, why sometimes we use chiếc, sometimes we use cái. Actually, they are most of the time cái and chiếc can be interchangeable. But because cái is so like, you know, so normal, we say it a lot. So sometimes you want to sound better in like kind of poetry thing or artistic thing. You want to sound better. You want that thing is specific. That thing is special. Like, I just bought a new bike. You say, oh, tôi mới mua một chiếc xe. Or you say, oh, this bike is so cool, so good. Chiếc xe này rất tốt, like that. Because you want to talk about that thing specifically, like specially. So you use chiếc. So what in what cases you can't use chiếc, you can only use cái. Yeah. 
Hong Lee Kai, Hong Yu Skip. So, like I told you, if the thing is movable, like easily portable, you can move it easily. It does not stick to the the bigger thing, the base firmly, like a leaf. A leaf can fall out of the tree easily. So you can use chip la, but you don't say chip cây in that in this because cây is like links. It links so firm, so stable, so hard to the ground. So it's hard to take it out. So hard, it's not standing out easily. So we say chip la, but cái cây. So cái is for thing that is like one unite object, unite. But chip is kind of for thing that is single and can be easily taken out. And you want to use it in a like poetry way or artistic way or special way. You use chip. So for example, in the house, the roof, cái mái nhà. You don't use chip with the roof. You can't just take the roof out easily, right? Or the other part of the or the house, and the door, cái cửa, cái cửa, right? Mm -hmm. The thing that are very firm with the background, with the base, use cái. Don't use chip, but it's single. You want to say it a poetry way. You want it to be special. You can use chip. Next classifier. So we have classifier for people and for things. What else we didn't have here? Classifier for animals or creatures. Con, con, con. So con is for all kind of creatures. Let's talk about animals. So you can use con to all kind of animals, even animals in general. Con vật. Con gà, con chim, con cá, fish, con chim, bird, con vật, animals in general. Okay, etc. And also you can use for things that are not really animal, but you don't know how to categorize this, like monster or ghost. Con ma, ghost. Con quái vật. <laughs> Funny, right? Con quái vật, monster. And also, you can use con to talk about the the babies, children of of of, of the parents. Con cái or human. I just told you con người. Or you can talk about gender. Con trai, con gái. Con trai, con gái. You put um, you put trai and gái is the adjective to talk about gender for people, and then they know ah that is người. So the male and female adjectives for animals, we use we use different words. So you understand that is about people. That's not about uh, animals. Con, okay. Practice saying some con. Like what con do you like? Bạn thích con gì? For me, tôi thích con chó. I like puppy or a dog. Okay. Next.